I was familiar with Fairweather from the paintings, and um, which I admired, and I was familiar with it from the time when I lived in Australia. It was an interesting story for lots of reasons because it, it talked about, or potentially could talk about a lot of other things. I was interested in the fact that um, I think so much of what Fairweather, the, the, the way he led his life and the, the way that he made artwork was, was, was very determined in a way by, by um, um, how much money he had. And um, a lot of his actions seemed to be determined by, by that and, and of course this raft journey. When I found out further information about what had happened, he actually he actually travelled on from Indonesia to um, to London, and he um, yeah, he was deported out of out of Indonesia. Um, he refused to return to Australia, and so. Well, he produced a British passport or something to prove he was a British citizen and he was eventually deported to London where he had to um, pay the, his passage to the Crown and he didn't have money so this was the early 50s. At that time apparently it was still possible to do hard labour so he dug ditches supposedly in Devon for three months or something to pay back his passage. So effectively he did travel around the world from Darwin ultimately to London and there was no monetary exchange. And I think that that whole idea of global travel um, without paying for your passage in any conventional sense, I thought it was a very interesting idea. This documentation from uh, Peter Spillett, a Northern Territorian historian, I think, who travelled widely in the um, in Indonesia, in the Northern Territory, and um, who was on Roti, I think, in '87, and asked various local people if they remembered a white man arriving on a raft in the 50s, and eventually he found the person or some of the people who were actually involved in there when Fairweather arrived. And um, he got um, an account from them as to what happened. And it sounded, from that account, it sounded as if there was this strange transaction that went on whereby the, 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 the local people took the raft as a gift to them, or they, 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 they took the object the vessel and um, kind of also helped him re recuperate and recover so there is immediately on this kind of almost like first contact kind of scenario some kind of, of gift exchange going on. Das gift actually has got nothing to do with gifting at all, it's, it, it means uh, the poison there are actually is actually, I think, passages in the Marcel Mouse that suggest how this kind of gift economy is in fact more expensive than um, than using conventional money, and how you um, are brought into this 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 long term kind of um, indebtedness to other people. I chose that press clipping because I make these big, quite complicated sculptures that, that um, really um, create big, complicated, long stories or whatever, which are often very complicated for people to pick up on or figure out without lots of text or some didactic panel or whatever. But I made that, the connection with that work, because if you read that, 
You don't need a didactic mm -hmm. panel uh, because that work is part of the um, piece which it goes in combination with that. If you read the original press text to that, it points, I mean, it doesn't give all the detail about everything, but it points out enough about everything that happened for you to understand the story. But the one thing that I think is very nice about the, the tanks and the sale is the basic materials for fair weather when you are thinking in terms of this, this um, extra market economy like beyond the market is that, that they were obviously they were all free but they weren't only all free they literally fell out of the sky so it is, it is also very poetic this idea and I think that that's one thing I very much like about this actual structure when it's completed is that it has that really strange um, like a flying magic carpet it's, it's like a plane and a boat at the same time because this is all aviation these are out this is, this is off a plane and obviously that is too but it has this weird thing of you know like those old depictions where they had um, flying machines that were boats that were like boats like Sinbad the sailor had isn't it like it's a boat sailing through the sky so it has that really nice crossover with, with, um, with a plane which I quite like